Thomas Nelson and Lewis Nairns did this study at about 1980 where they just took a variety of general knowledge questions and normed them. Basically found out how many out of about 300 students could answer them correctly. The idea is they wanted to find out how difficult all these general knowledge questions were so other researchers could use them in their investigations of how students retrieve information and memory. So really their original norms was kind of just a uh, service to the larger research community and it's been used widely for the last 30 years. I noticed that just looking at some of these questions, they have to be out of date. We just got figuring that maybe these needed to be updated. Maybe basically there's been lots of generational shift where what was relatively common knowledge 30 years ago, many students may have no idea about today. We collected about um, 300 responses for each of these questions. Got a good sense about how well college students know a lot of trivial pursuit. It turns out that out of about 300 questions that we asked, about a third of them that students did relatively well on in 1980, they bombed out today in 2010. And it's not because students today are any uh, less smart than students are were 30 years ago, which is some of these questions are really developed for students of that cohort. For instance, what game uses a doubling cube? When I was in college, over 30 years ago, uh, we would every once in a while pull out the backgammon game and, you know, have a good game of backgammon at night. I would doubt you could find a backgammon game on this campus that's not an electronic version, and I bet you those don't even get played. I mean, this is just something that's no longer part of the culture today. On the same hand, however, there were a variety of questions that students today did better than students did 30 years ago. For instance, what country is Baghdad the capital of? Pretty much about half the students at Kent State knew the right answer to that, Iraq, whereas almost no one 30 years ago knew the right answer to that. So again, we see a shift upward in the knowledge for that. So again, no surprises necessarily, but there's been lots of changes in just the culture in the last 30 years. Well, I think it's going to be most useful to researchers who are interested in retrieval from long-term memory. And I think it's going to be highly valuable to them because now they'll be able to choose the right kinds of questions for their particular kinds of investigation. So if they need very difficult uh, questions, They'll have a lot of them available, but now if they need relatively easy questions to conduct their research, they'll know which ones those are. Now what was uh, easily accessible and kind of in people's faces 30 years ago has just changed today. We just hear different things in the news. We're, we're linked into different kinds of information. If anything, we have access probably to way too much information. It's knowing what to do with it.